Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Miss Faith and this is my world. Okay, today's message is what is he offering you? Okay, what is he offering you? Before we get started, I want to say welcome. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to all of the new viewers, all of the new subscribers, and welcome to you who have been with me from the beginning. I appreciate you so very much. Now, for those of you who are new to the channel, I will answer your relationship questions. So, at the end of this video, I'll show you a link where you can send in your questions if you'd like for me to respond. Now, also, those of you who are interested in these caps, they are now available in my online store. So just go to the description, go to the bottom, and you'll see a link that says online store. Just click there, and there you are. Okay? Now, let's dig into this message today. What is he offering you? Now, okay, ladies, I've been telling you to know your worth, know your value, and, and carry yourself like you know your value. You understand? You don't respond to just anything that these fellows are coming up to you saying. And I'm going to tell you, you need to look at what is he offering when he comes. Now, some of us <laughs> will take a man and he has not offered anything except his one, his one, and that's not really worth it. You understand? You need more than that. You deserve more than that. And you need to know your value, you see, so that when these men come up to you, then you can listen to what he is actually offering you. Now, uh, many men, they'll just come up and just start talking. And uh, a lot of them would just come up to you talking sex. So, if that's what he's offering, you have free will. You can either go for it or not. But remember this, ladies. If you accept an offer from a man... And all he's offering you is sex. Don't think that he's going to change the offer as time goes on. You understand? You accepted the sex offer. So that's all you can expect from the situation or the relationship. Because that's what you have accepted. Ladies, I'm telling you, once you know what you are worth, then you won't just go for these empty offers. Empty offers. That's why I say, ladies, love yourself. And when you love yourself and you know your value, then you pick and choose the best offer for you. You understand? Show these men that you are not cheap. And you're just... You just won't go for anything. And you're not so desperate to have a man in your life that you're willing to take anything. Don't do it. Don't just take anything in the beginning thinking that, you know, as time goes on, then, you know, he will morph into the man that you want. No. No. When you meet these men, that's who they are. In fact, when you meet them, you're meeting the, the, the <laughs> pretty much the best version of themselves when they, when they meet you. So, <clears throat> for instance, look at this. If a man asks you out on a date and you decide to go, okay. When you go on the date, remember, you go to interview him. 
It's like an interview. It, you don't have to interview him like as if it were a formal interview. But that's what you're doing. You want to see if, if you really want to engage with this man or not. Now see, uh, if you accept an invitation to date, to go out on a date, it's probably because you see something that has attracted you to him. Okay, that's fine. But when you actually go out with him, go knowing in your mind that you're going to see who he really is and what is, what is he offering you. Not vice versa. You're not going there to show the man that you can afford him. He needs to be showing you that he can afford you. Do you understand the difference in that? Knowing your value, then he needs to make an offer to be with you. And a lot of us women, we're not requiring that. We don't require the man to even offer us anything because we're just so delighted that he wants to be with us. Remember, ladies, you are the prize. You, but you got to know that. You got to know it with all of your being that you are the prize. You understand? And he, he wants you. He actually needs you. But if you sell yourself cheap, then that's what you'll get. And, and then, <laughs> you understand? And then that, later down the line, you'll be crying and whining and wondering what to do with this man when you are the one that made the mistake. You are the one who accepted his low ball offer thinking that, I guess, thinking that in time he would treat you better. Mm -mm. Whatever you bargain for, that's it. You understand? The deal is the deal. And you can expect anything other than that. Now, ladies, if you want to be smart about it, like I said, be celibate. Allow the man to pursue you. What that means is, don't call him up. Don't text him up. And if he's texting you. Now, this is a man who's trying to get to know you. Okay. You know what? If he's trying to get to know you, why he can't call? Why is he texting? You understand? Maybe you, you won't even respond to that. If he's serious about knowing you, he should call. He should be making all the grand steps to impress you understand treat yourself as if you are royalty a queen and you should be treated like that and do not accept less so when these men come to you they need to come with an offer an offer and if they don't pass them by if they are not offering you something to be with them, pass them by. Okay? You see, many men, they've gotten so laxed in the way that they treat women. And, you know, a lot of that blame goes to the women because we have accepted it. We have accepted whatever the man wants to pinch off these little breadcrumbs to give us. And we want to act like that's something grand. And then we want to complain about it later. No. Set your standard in the beginning. In the beginning. You understand? And then it should be smooth sailing. Make sure you know what the man is offering you to be with him. You shouldn't just be with a man for nothing. Just because he's a man and he has a wand. And see, a lot of ladies get mixed up right there. When you are not celibate and you are 
sexually active with all of these energies in you. You see, it's hard for you to see through the clouds. <laughs> it really is. It's hard for you to see what's really going on here. That's why I say be celibate. Pull yourself out of that energy until you can see things clearer and you can feel better about yourself. See, a lot of this is about you. It's about what you accept. You understand? You can't blame the other person for getting you on a cheap tip and then continue to just break from you because that's what you accepted. You understand? So you can't blame him. The blame is on you. You have free will. You don't have to accept everything that comes along. Just because you feel like you need to settle, you never need to settle when you know who you are. And that's what I want you ladies to do. Take time with yourself and know who you are. And those of you, I get a lot of letters from ladies who saying that they've been celibate for many years or whatever. But during that time, have you been working on yourself? Have you been increasing your knowledge about yourself? Have you been elevating spiritually? Or have you just been dormant? Being celibate and being dormant. You're wasting your time. Elevate yourself. Because when you do that, better things will come into your life. Better things. And not just men. Abundance. Prosperity. All of that will come when you elevate yourself and get into a higher vibration. You understand? And these things are important. I know uh, I did do a video on how to, uh, how to, how to begin your uh, spiritual awakening. And I'll put, that, I'll put that in the description for those of you who missed that video. But it's important, ladies. I want you to understand this. Don't just take a man if he is not making a solid offer to you. When you go on the first date, ask him, you know, what are your intentions? <laughs> and see what he says. Now, if he is immature, his answer will be immature. But if he is a mature man, and he has good intentions, he will have no problem telling you what, it, what they are. He will have no problem. And then this way, you can explain to him what your intentions are. What is it that you desire? And then see if he's willing to comply to that. You understand? Don't hold anything back. Don't be afraid to tell a man that you're celibate. And don't be afraid uh, that he's going to run away because if he if he runs away when you tell him that you're celibate that's a blessing that's a blessing because nine times out of ten he was only coming to you for sex anyway and once he got that he'll probably mistreat you and leave you and dump you and break your heart and all of that so always take rejection as divine protection you understand? And all of this is when you love yourself. You got, you got to value who you are and know who you are. And then you won't allow any of this kind of mistreatment that men are shelling out today. They don't feel like they need to offer you anything. You understand? Because they think that it doesn't cost, it shouldn't cost them anything. Take over your body. Take over your resources. Use and abuse you. You understand? Because see, you are taught to submit to them. And many of them still have that in their heads. That you are taught to submit to, to their will. Ladies, we're changing that. We are going to change that. We are not going to be doormats to these men. Don't take a man if he's only coming to offer 
his wand to you. That ain't worth nothing. That's nothing. Ladies, listen. If you want a commitment, a relationship, then you need to state it in the beginning and see where he's coming from. And don't give him that. Don't let him give you that old yang yang. Yeah, that's what I want. Yeah, let him talk first before you tell him what you desire. You find out where his head is. You understand? Remember, ladies, you are interviewing him. You're not just going out on the first date because you want to eat or you want to go to the club or something like that. You want to know who you're dealing with or about to deal with and determine whether you want to deal with him or not. You understand? And see, this is another thing. When you go out on a date, don't drink it up. If you have one drink, one glass of wine, which usually I'll have one glass of wine just to unwind a bit. But don't go past two. Don't go on a date when you're trying to know this man and drink it up. How you going to know him if you're drunk? How you going to know him if you're high? You understand? See, a lot of relationships start out like that. You don't, the man's not offering anything, maybe some drugs or booze or whatever. And because you are intoxicated, you never really get to know the man. Then as time goes on, when you're dealing with him and you're sober, you may find out you don't even like him. <laughs> you understand, ladies? Stay sober so that you can see and understand what he is really offering you. And then you decide whether you want to take his offer or not. But men need to realize they need to come to the table with an offer. You understand? Not empty handed. Don't, don't, don't. Do not hook up with a man who, who comes to you empty handed. He has no offer. Then you don't need him. Period. You don't need it. Because if he doesn't have anything to offer you, then he's coming to take from you. You understand? And when you are in a sober mind and know what you're doing when you go out on these dates, you can pick this up. You can pick it up. So when you go on a date, you're on a mission to see if this is the man that you would like to be involved with. You understand? Now, remember, men lead with sex. But once you go on a date and he finds out that you're, you're not gonna, you're not interested in having sex with him because I'll put it in their face right at the first date. I, I won't wait. I'll tell him right off. I'm celibate. Because I want to see what his reaction is going to be. You see, if he's going to run or if he's going to stay. And I'm going to tell you, if he runs, my feelings not hurt. I'm happy because that means that I didn't have to go through that those changes with him, knowing that all he wanted was sex. Not interested in a relationship, just wants sex. And I'm telling you this, ladies, because this will prevent you from a lot of heartbreak down the line. Okay, all right. So um, we have some letters here. So let's get in. Let's let's read some of these letters. Okay. All right. Here we go. <clears throat> here is a young lady, and uh, uh, she's talking about her husband. I am currently married to a man that I allowed to move into my space eight years ago. And it has been nothing but a living hell. I bet. Never let a man move into your space. Period. He doesn't do anything around the house unless I ask. Or rather argue with him. And if something is broken, he asks me for the money to buy another one. <laughs> something as simple as flowers for the garden. 
I had to give him my Home Depot card for him to buy them. Okay, I guess uh, <laughs> this man obviously is for you because of your resources. I mean, <laughs> you can you can plainly see what he's about if he's asking you for money. So let's see what else you say here. He states that it's not his house, but he lives here, eats, bathes, washes clothes, washes vehicle, etc. <sighs> yeah, ladies, I mean, this happens so many times. And I want you to understand, that's why you should not let him move in. He's only there to take advantage of you. And right, he's not coming to help you to, to upkeep your property. You understand? He's not there. He figures that if he comes there and pays you like a rent, a rent, then he has access to your property. But think of this. If he went to an apartment and paid rent, number one, he's, he's not going to be getting off as cheap as he is living with you. Because number one, if you get a rental, you got to pay your own internet, cable, if you want cable, electricity, and all of that. But when these men move in with you and they just pay you one fee, like a rent, because that's what they're buying, that's what they're thinking. They're just renting from you. But they want to eat. They want to use up your water. They want to use up your lights. I remember when uh, the narcissist lived with me for one year. He complained about uh, the heat wasn't high enough for him. He was always cold. But let me tell you something. He never gave me extra money to pay that bill. That wasn't in, in the program. You understand? And for electricity or water or whatever he used, he never gave me anything extra. As a matter of fact, I remember one time he came and told me he didn't have all of the money that he agreed he was going to pay me every month. He came and told me I ain't got it. So he gave me part of it. And I mean, he never came back and gave me the rest. But he felt entitled to do that. These how these men take advantage of you. You understand? You still got to pay your mortgage. You don't care. Or your rent or whatever, you, whatever your situation is. But he doesn't care. Because that's your problem. Not his. Okay? Let's see what else you say. He gives me $800 per month. But out of of it, I paid the car insurance out of that little $800. The cable, internet bill, the water bill, and the rest is spent on everyday items around the house. He does nothing but go to work, eat, watch TV, goes out when he wants to. And he doesn't help me with cleaning or anything. Right. He didn't come there for that. And, and again, the message to this video is what is he offering you? When you met this man, what did he offer? Probably nothing. But his wand, that's all he had to offer. You understand? And that's why you're stuck in this situation right now. Because you accepted him without an offer. Okay? Let's see what else. Within a few weeks of being married to him, he started saying the mistake he made was to move into my home. The reason he kept saying that was because he couldn't have his way because all my three children and granddaughter live with me. Listen, this is your home. If he's not happy there, then he need to move out. Do not modify your living situation because of this man who is leeching off of you. Okay? 
Now that I am somewhat of an empty nester, because four years ago I took on the responsibility of caring for my now disabled 75-year-old mom who suffered a stroke and was recently diagnosed with three-stage breast cancer. Okay, so you got your mom living there. And listen, I know how this one, uh, when I was with the narcissist, my dad got ill and he moved in with me. The narcissist who was there just using me didn't like it. But hey, this is my place. Don't tell me what to do in my place. If you don't like it, you can leave. And eventually he did. Okay, he did. All right. This man has been emotionally and mentally abusive to me. And because of that, I am on increased dosage of depression, hypertension, and migraine medications. No, don't do that. Try try to um, get off that medication. Those medications are not good for you. Okay? Uh, my, my advice to you is to start meditating. This will uh, raise your vibration where you can get above that depression. You understand? You can rise above it on your own. But you have to have faith, believe, and uh, be consistent with your practice of healing. Okay? And, and what that's going to entail, doing your affirmations every day, spending time in meditation every day, and thinking positive, speaking positive, and hopefully not being around this toxic individual. Okay? Let's see. This man is slowly killing me. I'm in the process of falling for my divorce right now. He came with nothing and he will leave with nothing. I had my home for 17 years prior to marrying him. And after finding out some things about him, I had to quickly retain a lawyer and I got a post-nuptial agreement. Well, that's news to me. I, I didn't even know you could get a post-nuptial agreement. But if you got one, Maybe you can send me a note and tell me about that. I, I didn't even know that was possible. Okay. My question is, I know you say not to have a man move into your home. I am almost 51. And this is my second bad marriage. But I still believe that true love exists. Yeah. True love does exist. But let me tell you something about that. Okay. What you want is a uh, committed dedicated love that's what you want now uh, that was a time in my life that I seeked true love and true love is like an unconditional love okay but but many times your true love will come just to teach you a lesson it may not be exactly what you what you want so be careful in what you ask for okay because when my true love showed up <laughs> it wasn't quite what i wanted it was it was a teaching experience but true love is unconditional love and what i mean by that it wasn't quite maybe your true love isn't mature enough Maybe your true love still has work to do. You understand? So, if I were you, I would kind of change my language in meditation or uh, in your asking for what you desire. And I would say something like, I desire committed, happy, honest, dedicated love. That's what you want. Uh, okay, because I'm going to tell you, this whole thing about true love may not be what you think. So what if someone who is coming from another country and hasn't yet established themselves and doesn't have their own place yet, and the purpose of them moving to the U.S. is to be with you? 
Would that be different as long as the person make plans to secure a job once they are given a work permit and will be contributing to the home? No. No, why would you want to do that? Why do you feel you need somebody to move in with you? Okay, is it you cannot afford your own living expenses? So you're looking for somebody to come and share these expenses with you? I, I You know what? I don't quite understand where you're going with this. It looks like that either you're the type of person who feels like you have to have a man there or you're needing somebody to help you foot the bill. Either way, listen, ladies, you should be independent. You should be able to take care of yourself by yourself and not have to depend on a man. So, you know, here I'm a little confused, but no, I wouldn't take a man from another country or a man that's right here to move in with me. I'm telling you, if you need a man to come to help you pay for your living expenses, you're going to always be in this situation. It's not going to change. Men are going to come in there and do the same thing this other man did to you. Because you're setting it up for that. It's you who are creating this. Not the men. You're just drawing these men in to come in and take advantage of you. That's why I'm telling you. You have got to change yourself if you want your situation to change. The way you're going, it's never going to change. <laughs> you're just hopping from man to man to man to move in. You need to start valuing yourself and to know your worth. None of these men are offering you anything. What, to help you with the rent? If you just want somebody to help you with the rent, why don't you just open up a rental and rent to women? Well, you need these men to come in here to take advantage of you <laughs> sexually, emotionally, physically, and all of that. Why would you need that? Understand, ladies, use your head when it comes to this. These men are only coming to take advantage of you. And you are the one who's setting it up for them just to come in and do as they like. And then you want to complain about it. You don't value yourself. And these men know it, can tell it, and that's why they're swooping in on you. My advice to you is no. Do not, do not keep moving these men into your space. You will only get this type of treatment or worse if you continue doing this. It's not going to get better. If you're looking for better, then you have to be better. You need to be more independent. Take care of yourself. And choose a man that, that offers you something other than coming in to help you pay the rent. You, you understand? You don't need that. Okay. So I hope, I hope that this message helps you. You're, men are looking for women like you. A lot of men are looking for women like you because they want to be taken care of. You understand? Like, like this man that you uh, married. You must not have known him either before you married him. If he's just coming in there paying you $800 a month. Listen, for you to marry the man, he need to be taking care of the whole mortgage. He need to be taking care of all the bills. And whatever monies you make can help, you know, with the family affairs or whatever. You got it all flipped around. 
you taking care of him. And you're getting ready to set yourself up to do it again. So what I'm trying to tell you is love yourself. Know your own value. You're putting the value in the men and none in yourself. Do not accept a man who is not coming with a good offer. And apparently, the only thing these men, your, your husband and any other man that, you know, if you're looking at another man who's out of the country, the only thing they're offering you is to come and help you with the rent. That's it. You understand? So I hope that this message helped you. And I hope that you understand that. So let's go to another letter here. I am a 62-year woman, almost 63, and have always been extremely shy. I believe I, believe I have avoidant personality disorder. I'm not a clinician, so <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't know about that disorder. I was never asked out on dates in high school and never went on any homecoming dances or proms, which I feel so bad about now. And no, I missed out on memorable moments. A friend of mine introduced me to my husband, since I never could seem to find a good one on my own. I was married for 25 years, and my ex-husband left me for another woman. And he got divorced from that woman, I guess, in 2009. I almost lost our house through foreclosure. And no, he never paid me one cent of alimony. His now girlfriend gets his SSI check now. I tried the dating thing for five years and it was horrible. The very few that seemed to like me, I didn't care for. Some of the guys would pick me up from my home and then he would get several miles away on the way to the date and then they decided they didn't like me and turned around and brought me back home okay I <laughs> I don't know what this is about I don't know what kind of energy is going on for a man to start to take you out on a date and uh, turn around and take you back home number one on the first date you know, I, I advise for you to drive yourself to a first date. If this is what's happening on a first date, you don't want the man really to pick you up and take you on a first date. i tell you why. Because he could be a lunatic or something. And now you stuck with him to take you back home or he could take you anywhere you don't know where you're going and things like that. It's better if you meet him until you get to know him. And can trust him. Okay. So let's see what else you're saying. One guy. After only a week of dating. We went to the movies. With his payment. Of a gift card. And going to a hamburger and fries place. Plus a bikers. Get together. Where he bought me. A coke. Informed me that I was a waste of his time. And money. And an embarrassment to his biker friends on account of me being so shy. Um, I don't think it's that you're shy. It's probably that you are engaging with the wrong type of man. Okay, one guy conned me out of a good chunk of savings where he stated he was going to give me a job at his car business. I know it was an awful mistake. He knew I was going through a divorce and very vulnerable, and he took advantage of me. Okay, ladies, you can't put it on the man for taking advantage of you. You can only put the blame on yourself. Ladies, we are the intelligent of the two species. And for you to allow men to take advantage of you, the blame sits with you, not the man. You understand? Because you allowed it. 
you allowed to be conned by this man. Okay, let's see what else she say. At least I had the satisfaction of suing him. Listening to you, I know that I don't need a man to make my life complete. I want to pursue my own dreams and ambitions on my own with no one telling me what to do. This may sound bad, but after what I've been through, frankly, men turn me off and I want nothing more to do with them. Listening to your video on karma, do you think karma will get these men back? Okay, let's talk about that. <clears throat> karma. Ladies, don't look for karma to get people back. Because if you do, that karma going to switch around and hit you right in the behind. Let it go. Karma would do its job. But you don't sit there and wish it on people. And you don't sit there waiting for it to hit people. You go on and better your life. Now for you, I want you to understand this. This letter, this letter. I want you to understand. This is happening to you. Because, number one, you are attracting these type of men. Which means you need to work on yourself. So you will attract a better type of man. You understand? The divine ladies will bring you what you are attracting. Your perfect match. Okay? Now look around. If the men in your life or the man in your life is not treating you with respect, love, caring, and all of that, it's because it's something that you need to work on about you. You're only attracting what you have inside. And then you want to complain because you're being treated this way. You don't value yourself. You don't know your self-worth. And you are accepting nothing. This video again is about what is he offering you. Think about that. What is he offering you? In this letter, I don't see where he's offering you anything. And you have accepted it. You understand? Ladies, I want you to understand you need to go inside and value who you are. And work on yourself. Again, for you, look at the video that I'm going to put in the description. And start your spiritual awakening. And this will raise you above these toxic people. And your life will improve. But you have to do the work. It's not automatic. You have to work on yourself. And start loving yourself. Okay. This is what I believe. If you are with a person. That is not making you happy. And is not measuring up. To your standards, leave. It's exim as simple as that. Just leave. And just tell, you know, if you need to tell him, you know, just tell him. That uh, you don't think that this is going to work out for you. And that's it. Now, that's if you want to do it the proper way and tell him, I know. Some people just won't acknowledge his calls anymore. Just ghost him. But, you know, I'm, I'm the type of person I like to tell people. I don't like to leave them hanging and they don't understand or anything like that. So, just tell him it's just not working out for you. But, make sure this is what you want to do. Don't play him. Don't tell him that because you're thinking that he's going to change for you. People, you need to accept people the way that they are. And if they are not satisfying to you, you need to leave. Cut and dry. Just leave. And work on yourself until someone else comes along that's more suiting 
to your desires. You understand? You don't have to stay with these people and beat yourself up and wondering what to do and all that. If they don't meet your expectations, leave them and you'll be doing him a favor. You see? Because you'll free him to go look for someone else that will be more pleasing to him. So you'll both be winners. You understand? People just be fair. Be fair. I, I hope that you understand this message today. When men approach you, know what they are offering you. And if they don't have an offer, pass them by. If they're not offering you anything, pass them by because you deserve the very best. You see? So you don't you don't accept a man who who does not come with an offer. Don't accept it. And him coming with just his one is not an offer. It's not an offer at all. So I hope I hope that you I hope that you understand this message and I really hope it helps. Now for those of you who have questions and you would like for me to answer your question, here is the link. Send your questions to MissFaysWorld at Hotmail.com and I will either answer your letter through the email or I will read it and answer it online here. Now I'll read it on the air if I feel that the response can help the collective unless you specify at the top of your letter to please respond through the email and I will comply to that okay and try to keep your letters to one page just summarize the situation and ask the question okay I thank you so much for uh, watching this video I thank you for supporting this channel I Thank you, those of you who send in a donation. I appreciate you so very much. And thank you for your comments. I do read them. And uh, it just lets me know how you feel about these messages. So keep them coming. So I wish you all well. I wish you happiness. And I hope to see you next time.